kind of want to ask you about your lifestyle, right? Like, are there any habits, routines, or things that that you do consistently in order to maintain this life of happiness? <laughs> I really am obsessed with prioritizing my sleep. <laughs> so okay. that's a boring that's a great answer, one. But... <laughs> no, no, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I think sleep is so important. I mean, I'm one of those people who um, needs to get their their hours in. I'm not good on limited sleep and stuff like yeah. that. So um, prioritizing sleep, going to bed early, um, you know, taking time to unwind in the evening. That's always really important for me. When I wake up in the morning, I usually try and set an intention or just kind of breathe for a few minutes and kind of pause, do some sort of light meditation. And I, I honestly, like I use two intentions most of the time. The first is, um, like, can, may I use this day to be myself and give up myself? So like kind of trying to affirm that idea of happiness or today I will do my best to love myself and love others, which is sort of another way of saying the same thing. Um, So I I try and use that to remind me of what matters most. And then I have a kind of spin on gratitude, which is as I go through the day, I try and think about who, who helped me, who's helping me, you know, like who showed up for me, who was there for me because we take it for granted. We like tend to miss it. And like, you know, just the little moments like, oh, my partner brought me a coffee in the morning. Like that was really nice. Or someone sent me a nice email. All of these little moments of help. It makes me feel connected to the world and like I'm not alone. And it inspires me to to give back as well. Yeah. I love that because it's, I, I think what you're doing is you're just reaffirming this framework that, and this life that you want to see. Cause everyone's reality is based on how they filter it. Like the same person, mm-hmm. like let's say someone else could have just as much like support or friendliness from the people around them, but they don't, they're focused on themselves. So they don't even see it. Right. The fact yeah. that you make it a point to pay attention to all the ways people are helping you in your life. It just makes you feel more connected. Exactly. It's so, um, it's so comforting because I, I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life when I felt really lonely and really alone. Like I was by myself and kind of struggling to deal with a problem. And it, it's such a horrible feeling. And a lot of those times I was actually not paying attention to the ways that people were showing up to help me. Yeah. I was ignoring it. And, Mm -hmm. um, it would have made those times a lot easier if I'd had the awareness to be like, hey, um, people are there for you. People are helping. If you want something different, you might need to ask. You might need yeah. to be explicit about what it is that you want. But there are people around you and you're not alone. Uh, and I guess like it ultimately for me, it feels like it comes down to like so much of our unhappiness right now is about feeling alone and stuff. Like we don't have anyone to lean on or support that we need. And so however we can find a way to look at those interactions in our day and notice how we're showing up for one another. It really fills my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I think it's so important. Like I hope that helps our listeners because everybody, we all are in a weave of human connection. Some of us just don't see it, (laughs) right? You only see what you want to see. And some people are just like blind to it. Yeah. But it is there if you pay attention. Like I'm such a believer of like like your reality can change if if the way you look at it changes, right? So like true. it yeah. all is what you choose to pay attention to. Yeah. Like there's this metaphor I learned at grad school that you're reminding me of, which is that your attention is like a flashlight and it's, yes. this, you know, it's a narrow beam. Like you think about a flashlight, it's, it's bright, but it only illuminates this tiny little sliver of the world. And if your flashlight isn't shining on something, it's in the darkness. And so you miss it. You have to turn your flashlight to focus on what's, what's else is in the room. Yeah. And then this brings me back to the concepts of like old happy and new happy. I think people think, oh, I have to change my life to be happy. But I think what we're saying here is you don't have to change anything. You just have to change the focus of your flashlight, right? Like before you might be focused on my success and the outcome and whatever, my image, but then just change it to what what we were talking about today, like your yeah. your your gifts, your friends, your family, right? You've said it so beautifully. That's so um, you just summed it up so perfectly. Yeah, I kind of realized that too throughout this conversation. It's not like you don't have to change anything about your life. It's just you just change your perspective and your focus. 
It's so true. And like, I remember when I was younger, I used to think, I used to have that feeling of like, oh, my life is a mess. I need to fix it. I need to fix my life. I need to change everything. Exactly. And it it was such a horrible feeling. Like my life is broken and your life is not (laughs) broken. There's some things in the background that need to be pulled to the foreground. Maybe that's sort of what you're saying, right? Yeah, it's so funny because I can relate to that too. Sometimes you just feel like everything's a mess. I just need to start over from scratch. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I need to redo it's a blank slate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's not it's like not everything is not wrong. It's just you're just focusing on the wrong things. <laughs> Yeah. And everything, there's so much goodness around us, right? Like there's so much beauty in the world. There's so many wonderful people out there who are doing good things and trying to help and show up. And we pay so much attention to everything that's going wrong. Um, but there is so much goodness in you and around you. Yeah. I mean, this was another question that I was planning to ask was like, currently a lot of people are going through challenging times, whether it's in your personal life or just reading the news, seeing where the world is. It it feels so like scary, uncertain, and it, there's so much suffering. So like, how do you find happiness amidst all of these challenging times? I think that you try and help where you can. Like if you feel, I think there's this mistaken belief that people have about hope, which is that hope is something that happens to you. But in reality, what we know from research is that hope is something that you do. It's more of an action. It's something that you engage in and you experience hope when you are out there doing something to contribute. And I don't mean that you have to like go solve the problem that's on the front page of the newspaper, right? Like that's not, Mm. unless, unless you're listening and that is part of your job and you work (laughs) at, you know, (laughs) the UN or the government, that's great. But for most of us, that's not the case. I mean, Figure out what one small thing is that you can do to alleviate any sort of suffering in the world. And that suffering could be your best friend who just went through a breakup and who needs somebody there for her right now. It could be your mentee at work who is trying to figure out a hard new skill and is having a tough time and you could be there to help them. Any form of alleviation of suffering in the world contributes to a better world. So I feel the same sadness looking at the ways in which people suffer, but I don't ever feel hopeless. I feel empowered to want to do something about it and to contribute because I, I know that like I can do my little small part to make a difference. And that's what motivates me to keep going. I love that. It's so true. And another, it links back to something else we talked about in this conversation was, I think a lot of people feel like no matter what I do, it's not enough. But I think that's just like the mindset. It's like, you have to do that. Like, I'm making this small effort and I am enough. (laughs) Like this small effort is enough. And then even that can make you feel more at peace. And I think it's it's connected, right? This feeling of helplessness and hopelessness is because we feel like no matter what we do or what we say, it's not enough. But but you're, you're saying like, you can just change your mindset on that. Yeah, it's so true. And it's interesting because um, what you're describing is actually another impact of individualism because we think that in order to help the world, you have to be the hero who swoops right. in to save the day, right? But that's not how change happens. Change is a million people doing a tiny bit of good in their lives and in their communities. And then that adds up to make a better world. So you don't have to put that pressure on yourself to save yeah. the world. Um, yeah, no one person can. Up- all no, no, you, you can't, <laughs> it's impossible. right? Like mm-hmm. it would be, you're setting yourself an impossible task. And ironically, the more pressure you put on yourself to do that, the less likely people are to actually do something at all, like any small thing. Um, so instead just be like, Hey, my job is to be there to help the people around me. And that's what I'm supposed to do. And that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> 